This video is sponsored by me. Become a fan on Patreon to join my community, unlock exclusive content and other amazing perks. Go to patreon.com forward slash treknad and become my new best friend today. Happy First Contact Day! Like a good Trekkie, I've celebrated the big day by watching Star Trek First Contact, and uh, I've been itching to talk about it so badly the EMH has just given me some analgesic cream. A smash success when it warped onto screens back in 1996, First Contact is considered by many to be among the best in the series. Some out there even consider it to be better than The Wrath of Khan. But what do I think about it? Before I get into my review, this video will likely contain spoilers, so if you've not seen First Contact, and if you haven't, what are you actually doing? Go and watch that shit right now. This video might not be for you. Let's warp into this. First Contact is the sequel to the best of both worlds, the next generation's two-part masterpiece which saw Jean-Luc Picard captured and assimilated by the Borg as part of their efforts to conquer the human race. Six years later and the Borg are back, once again threatening Earth, but this time with sneaky spheres and time travel. Following them back in time to the mid-21st century, a revenge-obsessed Picard and crew battle to stop their terrifying enemy, while also racing to ensure a pivotal milestone event takes place as history remembers it. Star Trek was under a bit of pressure back in 1996. Generations, the first movie of the TNG era, had been released two years before and proved a bit of a mixed bag. Well, I mean, I liked it, but that's a video for another time. Star Trek needed to bounce back in a big way, and with 96 also marking Trek's 30th anniversary, the pressure was on to create something appropriately epic and, um, and also good. With First Contact, they did that and then some. The film is top-tier golden era Trek, a film that works for long-time fans while also being accessible enough to turn casual audiences into new Trekkies. Resistance, as they say, is indeed futile. First Contact smartly borrows from Trek's rich history, taking stuff that's worked well over the years and throwing it all together to make something new. As I mentioned earlier, the film is a follow-up to the best of both worlds, which is similar to how The Wrath of Khan was the sequel to the original series episode Space Seed. Much like The Wrath of Khan, First Contact also has great pacing, muscular storytelling, and is actually, secretly, character-driven despite all of the action and pew-pews and stuff. The film also takes inspiration from The Voyage Home with its time travel shenanigans shenanigans and fish-out-of-water elements, which make for some of this film's lighter and funnier moments. Visually, First Contact is on another level. It's crazy how well it's aged when compared to other films from the same period. The film's production design is light years better than anything we'd seen in Trek before. From the sets and uniforms, and even Geordie's brand new robot eyes, just about everything on the screen is better, and yes, at the risk of being controversial, that also includes the new Enterprise. Now look. I love me the D, but I don't think anyone can argue that the new Sovereign Class E isn't a better fit for the big screen with its sleek and more battle-ready look. This is a ship custom-built to kick the Borg's ass, and yeah, it looks every bit the part. Massive credit also has to go to director Jonathan Frakes, taking full advantage of his shot in the big chair. You really wouldn't have thought this was Frakes' first feature. He has a really good eye, immediately demonstrated by the film's impossibly long opening shot, the first of many ambitious shots that give the film an exciting and dynamic look. Along with some strong cinematography and editing, Frakes balances story and visuals without ever coming across as overly flashy. He makes making films look like a piece of cake here, and um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kind of annoying. A few years back, I had the pleasure of asking him about his experiences making First Contact in a video which I recommend checking out, links in the description below. A major standout feature is the film's terrifying reimagining of the Borg. With a much bigger budget compared to the show, the Borg are transformed from looking like cyborgs with a bondage kink to an insect-like tech zombie that honestly kind of ruined my life when I first watched this as a kid. The Borg were always scary in the show, but they really turned it up to 11 here, no longer showing assimilation as just kidnapping and surgery, but now as an invasive viral infection, a violent, disfiguring process that the film succeeds in selling as a fate far worse than death. Their infestation and takeover of the Enterprise is like something out of a horror movie. The Borg in First Contact are now exactly what their creators had originally intended, a diseased intergalactic plague unlike any enemy we'd seen in Trek before, or 
since, come to think of it. In another smart move, the film also brought back composer, the late great Jerry Goldsmith, who took a leaf out of the screenwriter's book by borrowing from what he'd done before. There are notes from his legendary score from the motion picture, music that also combines synth and traditional elements. I actually think these sounds work better this time around, with the conflict of organic and synthetic being more central to the story. There's also some nice subtle incorporation of sounds from The Final Frontier, which, uh, let's face it, is probably the best part of that film. First Contact score is sweeping and lush and perfectly serves the visuals, all its action, its horror and its more hopeful moments too. For me, it's impossible to imagine First Contact sounding any other way. Ah, and let's talk about the performances. Patrick Stewart is always excellent, but this could be his best performance in the role. After sad facing his way through most of Generations, he's clearly having way more fun this time around. This Picard is an all action badass, a more intense take on the character, which makes sense given his history with the Borg. Picard's need for revenge is the film's dramatic core. Just like Khan all those years ago, it's fascinating watching him unravel and losing his objectivity. As his obsession takes over and the fight against the Borg starts to look more and more like a lost cause, we get some really intense scenes. The best of these is his argument with Lily, which is one of the film's standout moments and a masterclass in escalating tension to breaking point, literally. Also great is Brent Spiner's Data, whose continued pursuit of humanity is vital to the story. I love the way the film continues his character arc spanning all the way back to TNG's first episode, but also remembering what happened in Generations and smartly finding a way to tie into the Borg's own mission to assimilate. Spiner gets a lot of cool stuff to do. He does that fast hand thing, he breaks this Borg's neck, and then he gets all romantic with the Borg Queen in a moment that I've never really been able to work out if it's hot or not. The Borg's attempt to kind of reverse assimilate him by grafting human skin is also a really cool and gross idea, which ends up with him looking like Trek's version of the Phantom of the Opera, uh, another design choice that traumatised me as a kid. My favourite main cast performance belongs to Michael Dorn's Worf, who's in scene-stealing form, particularly owning the tense deflector dish sequence with flashes of extreme violence and, for my money, the best line of the entire film. And where to begin with the film's guest stars? James Cromwell is an inspired bit of casting as Zephram Cochran, despite looking very different to the character's first appearance back in the original series. Cromwell's frequently hilarious, but is also strangely relatable as a cynical drunk, heavily burdened by the knowledge of his importance to humanity's future. And yeah, is this performance some sort of subtle dig at Trek's own flawed but deified creator? I'll let you be the judge of that one. By far the best new addition is Alfre Woodard, whose Lily is a great audience surrogate character. She's funny, adventurous, combative, has a sharp wit, and owns one of the best bullshit I've ever heard in a movie. More than that though, she's crucial to the character drama, having great chemistry with Stuart as she helps Picard realise the true extent of his dangerously spiralling obsession. The two characters work great together, and you can really feel the bittersweetness as the two part ways at the end of the film. While there's no doubt First Contact is a great movie, there are a few things that, for me anyway, hold it back from achieving perfection. While the Borg's visual upgrade is great, the introduction of the Queen has always left me with mixed feelings. Alice Krieger does a phenomenal job with her performance, and in isolation, the character does make for one of Trek's stronger villains, seductive and sinister, with a striking look and one of the most incredible introduction sequences I think I've ever seen in a film. And yeah, I'll go there, she's sexy as hell. But not only did the Borg not need this kind of character, I actually think it undermined their unique nature. No longer the Lovecraftian unstoppable force first introduced in Q-Who, the Queen essentially reduces the Borg to little more than a tech beehive with a bit of a heating problem. First Contact is the best the Borg ever got, yes, but it was also pretty much all downhill from here, although they were back to their frightening best in Enterprise's awesome second season episode, Regeneration. Now while I get why it didn't happen, the lack of DS9 characters appearing on the Defiant during the opening battle sequence is also really disappointing. The lack of Cisco, Dax, Kira, O'Brien and others is, I think, a major missed opportunity to showcase Trek's shared universe. Their no-show also begs a very important in-universe question. What the fuck was so important that they couldn't be on hand to protect Earth? This could have easily been answered with a single line in an episode of DS9, but yeah, we got nothing. 
Issues aside, First Contact is a banger of a Star Trek movie that brilliantly combines popcorn action frills with plenty of stuff to keep us die-hard Trekkies happy too. The film looks incredible, it's well written, directed and acted with a slick production design and eye-popping special effects that hold up incredibly well nearly 30 years later. It's easily the best of the TNG era, and while I wouldn't put it on the same level as The Wrath of Khan personally, I can definitely see why some fans consider it to be the best of the Trek movies. I'm giving Star Trek First Contact a 0.68 out of 10. You see what I did there? But what did you think of Star Trek First Contact? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this coming soon. Until next time, I'm the Trek Lad, live long and prosper.